everywhere. It, it could happen everywhere and we can be the victim as well. And everybody can be the perpetrators as well. So um, without further ado, let's start to the first uh, slide, okay. So a little bit of introduction, a little bit of opening. Gender-based violence, or we can call it GBV, is a serious violation of human rights and a life-threatening health and protection issue and can take many forms such as intimate partner violence, sexual violence, child marriage, female genital mutilation, and so-called yeah. honor crimes. Violence against women as a violent under four key forms, physical, sexual, psychological, and economic. The fact that currently not only women become the victim of gender-based violence, but also men could be the victim. Okay, so this topic probably can be a little bit like taboo for us, but let's open our mind and um, uh, share your thoughts about it. I will be gladly listen to what you think about it. Okay, let's uh, start to the discussion topic. Question number one, why does gender-based violence usually happen in our society? What are the root causes of it? Anybody want to start? Why is, why is it like, can happen, can be did by everyone? Everybody can be the perpetrators, be the criminal of it. Why, why, why it's like very common among our society. Um, if there is no one like trying to raise their hand, you can mm -hmm. also point at them, <laughs> just try to choose. Uh, people here randomly like what about you sir damas <laughs> want to try to give your opinion wow <laughs> such a frontal pointy um yeah thank you me senna can i call you that anyway anything you, you want to call me but my actual nickname is afis avis oh, okay. yes Whatever I want, can I call you babe? Oh no, I'm just kidding. sure. <laughs> <laughs> can, okay. Can. okay, so I think um talking about gender based violence or GBV, I think it's a very um not well known topic, yeah, because a lot of people are thinking that this kind of topic is very normalized. Um I think GBV occurs in Indonesia as in many other countries um, due to complex and also um, multifaceted or interconnected factors. I think um, it, we, you know, it's important to know that the roots of GBV itself um, is really like deeply embedded in social sectors because also I think there are some of the GBV coming from nor uh, cultural norms and also economic disparities and power dynamics. For example, like when um, the issue coming up from the traditional gender roles and norms, um, because in our society, women and also men are in a in equal, creates the opportunity for the higher position of supremacy, thinking that the other one is less than the other. This really condition or status quo creates this possibility of having GBV to occur or to happen in Indonesia. Especially, please correct me if I'm wrong, like, um, what's that called? Is that, uh, what's that called when, you know, somebody like calling a women on the street? I forgot the name. It's cat calling. Cat calling. Cat uh -huh. can, can it be considered GBV? Because what I think of is that it's because a lot of men didn't think of that cat calling is basically a crime they always think that it's just a joke and it's normalized because they will think that oh the woman is basically like to be called that way or there they will be um you can uh, you can say they're they're kind of flattered when they're called that way even though it's basically like a psychological impact to the women because they will think that they are being uh sexualized because of the cat calling itself and it's it's coming from the norms actually the culture and behavior of indonesian as well because we are like i think we lack of the education regarding that how cat calling can be considered as a crime and a lot of things you know seeing how two these genders are very different uh in our society and yeah i think we can consider this like patriarchal society 
Indonesia is very patriarchal. Men and women are very unequal, and they comes to the conclusion that men is superpower, like Superman. <laughs> no, but eventually we are the the weakest among the gender because we are very dependent to women, but they don't really want to seeing based on that. And also, I think the economic inequality also bring up about this possibility. And of course, the weak enforcement of laws. Indonesia, cat calling is not really like being uh, regulated currently about that being crime. It also opened up the opportunity. And yeah, uh, social stigma and silence. A lot of people will think of that cat calling is just like a normalized act of men trying to get, you know, to flatter the women, like trying to get close to women, but eventually it's very wrong. And of course, um, an educated parenthood, I think also contribute to this kind of uh, gender-based uh, violence because a lot of people do that without noticing how important it is for society to know that back to the again to the uh, education uh, issues and so on. I think it's very you know uh, complex issue if you are asking about the root causes. Yeah, back to the moderator. Sorry for talking too much. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Mr. Dimas. Okay. Uh, I think your opinion is very, very uh, exciting. I underline about the cat calling. Is it the GBV? I think I, it is a gender-based violence as well, because like um, the men or sometimes well, women can also be the uh, the perpetrators of the cat calling as well. And um, I think people who do it is like they want to show like um, superiority over the victim. And um, sadly, ironically, it becomes like something that is normalized in our people. And that was like very sad. I, I sometimes being the victim of catcalling as well when I'm like walking around and there is a, a group of men that was like saying like, um, like whistling and so that was like made me feeling very, very disturbed. I, it makes me scared. It makes me like feeling uh, unsafe and something like that. So um, I, I believe that it can be categorized as the GBP as well. And um, uh, I agree that uh, the gender-based violence can happen in our society very, very common because of the lack of education to our people. Because like uh, they're supposed to, uh, our children, they lack the education of like sexual education and something like that. How can you uh, being polite to other people and something like that? And um, I think this is gonna be something that we're gonna talk later. And yeah, I think, that's it. Uh, any any other uh, opinion about it? You know, like other uh, GBV, not not only kept calling, not only sexual assault. You know, something like forced marriage can also be part of the GBV as well. Forced marriage and then um, economic violence in the usually in domestic uh, violence, domestic uh, group, something like that, or online violence. It could be part of G GBV as well. So, uh, are there anybody want to talk? and giving the opinion. I want to try to hear from a girl's office. So yeah, you can just one of the girls here. <laughs> Randomly. Um, cool. Wait, wait, I have to open that. Um, the girl, I think I would like to call, I don't know, Lutfia, Ariana. <laughs> I just like taking random names. Is she here? L Can I Lutfia? talk? Oh, uh, sure, sure. Me too. Thank you. Tell me, sure. Uh -huh. Okay, so I think uh, the GBV, is that mm -hmm. how we call it? The GBV yeah. can happen because uh, the people who did this, they don't think it's harmful because it's just uh, flirting. We, we don't touch the girls and we just, we just talk and so like that so they don't feel like it is harmful or it is uh, physically abusive because uh, they don't see the physically uh, impact from the violence and i think it's i don't know if there is a guideline or policy to uh, to uh, form what kind of violence that what, what kind of uh, act that is um, included in 
some kind of violence. Maybe some people think catcalling is not violence because it's uh, it is so normal. And but maybe some other uh will think differently. And I don't think the the education or the the guideline about what kind of act is clear enough. So uh, that's why the GBV the the GBV action in our society is so so much happening without they actually knowing it and or maybe or even the victim they don't know that they are being violent and they could be done by the people that they know they're close or the strangers but sometimes they don't know that. It is harmful for them, but it is um, it is not good for them, and they just think, oh, this is just society. Yeah, uh, it's it's normal. It's uh, it's so they it it is a daily basis, and I think uh, we need to educate more uh to to wider people about what kind of GBV that can happen, and it's not only it can happen in uh, to women but also to men, because you can uh maybe uh uh in our society we think in our patriarchal patriarchal society we think uh, men are more superior and they are more powerful than women so they can't feel harmful so uh i i once saw a video about the um, foreigner in indonesia i think they're from korea and uh, our society, our people, I mean, Indonesian people, they called him and just flirting, hello, gitu, gitu. So, uh, and we can see how much uncomfortable, un uncomfortable that trainer, but we think, ah, it's just random guy, and it's just random, random flirting. It's not even flirting, it's just, we, we just call it. So, it's not clear what kind of act, uh, um, include of this violence so i think yeah that's uh that's what uh that's my thought uh, so we the the violence can happen to women or and men too and we need to educate more people about the the i mean maybe the uh how to be more polite or how to interact uh ethically to other people and etc i hope it's understandable thank you Okay, that's a very great point from Nutia. I, I, I caught your point. I, I underline that uh, the, the perpetrators of catcalling act, they they do it because they think like it's not harmful for the victim. I think uh, they, they do it because like it will not hurt them physically and something like that. And, yes. you know, like um, as I've mentioned before, even like online violence has also happened. And if you do some, you know, like online uh, harassment, it's, it also do not like harm somebody's body, right? But uh, the fact that it's also part of the uh, GBV yeah. is interesting. I mean, like um, one day I, I found there's a comment on Google Play Store of a game application. And in that game, you can play with random people. And um, in that game, uh, based on the comment I read on Google Play Store, uh, the person who is a she, she, uh, she was like telling that this game is not safe because in this application, the random people sent her like the genitalia photo of the, uh, the 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 randomized player. I mean, like it's also like traumatize her and it make her don't want to play that game ever again. I think that's also can be part of G the GBB. I mean, like the photo of a genitalia part, it's, it's, it's not abusing you physically, right? But it's still like disturb you. It makes you traumatized. And the cat calling as well, it makes us like disturbed and something like that. It makes us like, I don't want to go to that place where uh, the group of men is there, something like that. And yes, it can be did by the women to men as well. If you can see in some uh, Instagram photos of the sexy men and something like that, you will see how the girls like obsessed with them and like say, saying uh, uh, harassing words like in sexual way and something like that. That was like just the same. That's my opinion. Okay, I think we're gonna move on to the next question, question number two. Okay, wait. 
Based on data, women or females become the dominant victim of gender-based violence, but it doesn't rule out the possibility that men could be the victim as well. What do you think about the role of educational and or religion, uh, religious institutions on the phenomenon of gender-based violence around us? So how uh, is the role of like maybe school, college, or the uh, the relig religion-based uh, boarding school and something like that? Uh, what's their their role on the uh, phenomenon of gender based violence around us? Anybody wants to uh, give their opinion about it? Okay, Vin, time's issue. Okay, am I audible? Okay, so thank you for the opportunity. Yes, I really agree with this. So I think educational and religious institution give uh brings the big role to tackle about this problem. Let me give the example. For example, in the Africa, exactly in Sub-Saharan Africa, there are so many young marital age. So there are about uh many uh many girls who are married before 15 years old so it means they haven't have a high a higher education about it so that's why in their domestic life they usually experience the domestic violence because of the lack of knowledge as well and also uh what i want to highlight is some of them don't uh doesn't know how to get the access for the reproductive right as well so it is because of uh their age as well how they haven't got the access in education and for the second in religious institution yeah i think it does play the big role to solve this problem but it depends on the people itself because what i see so far uh, what become the root is the culture. For example, most of us maybe have ever heard about like a uh, woman is, sorry to say, uh, dapur, kasur, and sumur. So it creates the stigma that the woman don't have power, that, that women cannot have a bigger capability to do anything what they want. Yeah, I think that's what I can say. It is it is playing an important role, but it comes back to the root cause itself, that is the culture. Okay, thank you very much, Finn. I got the interesting point that you say uh, that knowledge can save uh, moreover to women like in Africa from the early marriage, mm -hmm. and it can save them from the like uh the lack of education that can lead them to like domestic violence or something like that. I agree with that, but um I want to make more uh, hook here in Indonesia. Like in Indonesia, um, ironically, in school, there are so many like uh, harassment that is being done by their teacher to the students. And um, sometimes like you can see in, in, in school, there are so many like teacher harassing their female students, moreover, if they are looking pretty with uh, like uh, seducing words or something like that in the class. And if you uh, know there are some, uh, there are a lot of uh, rape case uh, under the name of religions. They said, if, if you follow what uh, I ask you, you will go to heaven and something like that. That, that was very much happening in Indonesia. It was like, it's ironically, it's the uh, institutions of school, of maybe like religious based institutions any anybody wants to uh give uh opinion about it maybe uh sophie anand time show yeah miss thank you so much for your opinion uh opportunity it's actually a very good a very interesting question to me since i um i did my, my study in university which islamic university so it is connected an educational and religious institution. And I found that, uh, I'm sorry, sometimes I'm not using the proper words, but I, I experienced the cringes phenomenon in, in these institutions and, not, and I'm not proud of it. I experienced in the lectures, I, I witnessing my friends uh, did by the, the lecturer to the, the, to the students. And then the curriculum in general, it just, like you said, it's uh, pretty much 
patriarchal and also um the idea that uh, there's a lot of narrative that coming to our curriculum that women should be should obey the man in order to um in order to go to heaven at the end of the life and also like uh women should be very polite quiet um behave but not for the man men should be active um humorous and you can sometimes be rebellious that's also forgiven by the man and that's so unfair of course uh sometimes i heard narrative like when we gather in the field and the lecturer said that see there are more women in this field than the men themselves so it's obviously the men should have more than one wife in the future because uh, for all the women, for the rest of the women here will be a single forever if you don't want to allow your husband uh, poly, I don't know what is the English of polygamy, I, I, I hope that's correct, but yeah, and that just make me cringe so much, um, not only by the narration, the narration itself, but also it coming from my lecturer, the person should, the, the person that I consider very high intellectual, um level and also that I respect but they give us pretty much that example on our daily basis and the fact that I spending five years in college it just I don't know how to talk about it. I, I I've, ex I've witnessed so many uh, gen best gender best violence in my own institution so it's not even global problem I I took this example in a very close um in my in my close surroundings that's my opinion miss okay very good sophie indri time is yours hello hello okay my name is indri so i just want to add a little uh opinion about this uh, uh can, can can you guys hear my voice yeah it's crystal clear okay okay yeah, that's good um yeah in indonesia actually the educational institution have started the movements to prevent the gdp yeah just a little thing like such as social so social, socializing and putting up posters at schools and also university about the gdp and uh it's actually our responsibility also to give awareness uh, to the people around us because society uh, doesn't have the same perspective on gender-based violence. And um, it starts from gender discrimination or sexism and they don't have that awareness about this. Just a little bit experience I have uh, be, uh, I've done a little research about uh, asking people around uh, me or millennials about you know the new law the the law uh, TPKS if you know uh, it uh, they if I ask do you know about uh, undang undang TPKS they they would not know about this uh, I have to explain to them about the law regarding criminal acts of sexual violence uh, and such a this lack of knowledge result them not knowing that they are uh there are some actions that should not be allowed uh, but they still do it and like yeah like the ex example uh like uh, you guys mentioned before like cat calling uh forced marriage polygamy and uh there's a lot of uh violence that they don't know that actually forbidden yeah that's uh, my opinion thank you okay thank you so much indri Penny. it's your time okay thank you very much for giving me time my perspective about this question um for me uh the rule of education is really important for women especially if they want to get married of course um they have to be made in, in the age and their opinion about marriage 
and they have to know about American life or everything. They have to know it first. But we cannot deny that in a village, sometimes uh, they like uh, having a, like, um, they get married in an early age. It's because of their culture or their mindset. You know, in um, women or girls, if they are not married or um, they got married around uh, 20, 25, about it was that, uh, you know, uh, the culture, it's our culture or it's our mindset that uh, they are not, we don't sell out. That's the mindset I believe. But I would like to underline in this case, yeah, especially about uh, the religion. Yeah, I, I, I disagree that if someone state that, um, Especially because I'm a Muslim, yeah. I know that uh, in my religion, everything is good, but uh, uh, you know, sometimes if it is wrong that our religion is is bad or uh, it's not what is that is not uh, illogical based on. But uh, because I'm a Muslim, I know the concept is good. That the concept is good. Uh, if if you find that maybe in your Islamic boarding school it's not uh, what is it is related to your religion or it's not illogical, uh, I guess it's not, religion is wrong, but because of the human, yeah. Um, I don't care whether you disagree or uh, you don't agree about um, polygamy, yeah, polygamy because based on based on Quran, based on the Quran that I have read. It is clear that yeah in, in surah in surah whether you like or dislike it is it is the proof that but there are some uh, surah yeah if you want if you want to do uh, polygamy there are some rules you have to follow not just blame that oh uh, every man or every Muslim yeah you have to do polygamy you don't you don't need to blame that it's not because of the religion is wrong but the human itself who makes um. What is that um, Islam as as a bad in their man's? That's all from my side. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Henny. Thank you for the three participants uh, talking for these uh, questions uh, in 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 an order. Uh, how can I? Hmm, I would like to uh, underline the point. Uh, Sophie, I, I feel really sorry that um if your lecture like maybe uh, make the girl students in your college feeling like uncomfortable because of the way uh he act or he said. I can I can uh, relate to that because I have the same teacher as well when I was in uh, senior high school, but not in a religious context. He's just like very seductive to uh the girls in my class in, including to me it makes me like feeling very re really really disturbed yeah. but, like it's in a school institution i know how bad it feels like and uh i agree with the point that mostly in villages in indonesia where uh the women still lack of the education or the awareness of how important uh knowledge is then uh, their parents will like pushing them to just get married. You no need to go to college and something like that. It's very, very, you know, it's a sad fact because it happened as well in my, uh, you know, in my place. Um, moreover, to the place that is um, very far away from the city, from the town. Uh, in that place, like girls at the age of like 16, 17, 18, after they just graduated from junior or senior, or high school even if they're still 15 their parents will, will like go married go married and something like that it's and the reason why they get married let, let their child their their girl get married it's not because um the girl love the man no no it's not because like mostly the the little girl who is just like 15 16 17 years old who just like graduated from senior high school there was like um not because loving the men, but the parents want to take off their economical responsibility to the girls. And it's a really, you know, like a really sad uh, fact that um, the parents like go get married to that old or rich man and something so that I don't need to pay you anything and something like that. And yeah, it's it's a really sad fact. Thank, thank you so much for uh, giving this hint of this uh, 
discussions. I think we can move on to the third question because like we we've stuck so long for the second questions. Okay, so question number three is about the parents' behavior related to GBV. Somebody's character cannot be separated from the role of parents towards him or her. How do you think parents' behaviors could affect the character of somebody that could make them become gender-based violence perpetrators? Uh, in this context, the meaning is um, the perpetrators of sexual harassment. Maybe they can be the victim as well because of the nurture of their parents. Maybe the perpetrators, when he or she was a child, they always seeing their parents like having violence at home. It traumatizes them. It makes them grow into like a bad person that think that, oh, ab uh, abusive is okay. Controlling your par your partner too much is okay. Controlling uh, how your parents uh, do and something like that is something that uh, must do and something like that. So uh, how do you guys think about it? How do you think the parents' behavior can affect the character of somebody that could make them become gender-based violence perpetrators? Because maybe perpetrate the, per the sexual abuse perpetrators, maybe they can be the victim of their parents as well. Anybody wants to uh, give an uh, opinion about it? Anyone? You can try to just somebody randomly <laughs> office. <laughs> okay. Um. Ooh. I will see the parties for the list. I want to know from I don't know. Um I don't uh Adan Gifari. Let's just like take some random names. Adan, uh are you there or not? Or what about you, sir? Yanuar? I don't think he's there. <laughs> sir, Yanuar? Yeah, Yanuar. Let's I'm gonna try already. to give your opinion about the question yeah. that appear in your slot. Oh no! <laughs> this is a tough question for me. Okay, but okay, I, I'll I'll try to give the answer about this question. Mm -mm. How do you think the parents? Yeah, for me, uh, from my perspective. I was born in a family who are dominated by a woman figure. Uh, I mean, uh, since I was a child, uh, I was grown up by my grandma. Yeah, uh, she took me care 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 carefully. And then <clears throat> most of um men figure in my family are worker that are um, occasionally or maybe maybe um, not not frequently give their uh, their big what is this uh, their big perspective about the man um, to me is uh, I think can be actually I think for me it's uh, dominantly by a woman because uh, <clears throat> when I was a child, I was cared by my grandma, grandmother. And then the parents is also um, have their best, their best, what is it, their best, pangar, what is it, their best influence about, uh, to us. I think um, when what, you done, you done talking. Uh, is Mister Yanwar done talking? I don't know. Is it hello? Okay, I think it's uh done for Mister Yanwar. Mr. Dimas, it's your time. Thank you. <laughs> um, I think the question is really astonishing, yeah, to discuss because when you are 
you know, lining up the parenting styles, which probably have the bigger role in contributing to the GD GBV, then yes, we need to really having this as a touch base. Because a lot of people, especially us as a young people, needs to learn exactly what is the good parenting. Because I think Indonesia as well, not only that sex education is important, but being a good parent is also very important. And I think we are very lack of noticing how important being a good parent and implement the good parenting to the children. Because some of the people who got married and then want to have children, they can have children, but they don't know how to be parents, especially good parents. So let's talk about the parenting that probably can contribute to the GBV. I think in Indonesia, there are several types of parenting which I believe can contribute to uh, GBV, especially when the outcome of the parenting itself makes the children having lack of, uh, you know, um, responsiveness and also clear boundaries also with the power imbalance about these you know the genders and or else they will create the you know the gender-based authority which also will contribute to the gender-based violence i think one in indonesia that is most famous of type you know parenting type is that um you know, uh, tiger parenting or authoritarian parenting. I think this, it, this is one of the most um, common or mainstream parenting style that in a lot of Indonesian use, especially Asian countries. And authoritarian parents um, or parenting style, uh, you know, like often have strict rules and high expectation. When you are Asian, then you will have a lot of expectation. Oh, you have to get, you, you have to get this type of, high expectation, not only because you're a gender, you're a guy or you're a woman, but it's just, you know, like general kids, they will have high type of expectation and it will contribute to the power imbalances, which contributing to the, that submissive and supremacy that will come up again with the idea of that uh, speak loud. Oh, sorry. Is my voice too soft to hear? <laughs> Because I'm in the cafe right now. I'm afraid if I'm talking too loud. Um, yeah, that's what I believe will be uh, contributing to the uh, inappropriate behavior of the children based on the parenting. Uh, this type of parenting usually, you know, let's come up with the example. Yeah, For example, a lot of uh, authoritarian parenting will give the expectation to the their children, especially for women, for example, they will put the type of information about how they should, the woman should be like a caregiving personality based. Like if you're a woman, then at the end of the day, you need to know how to cook. You need to know how to be um, very, uh, what is that called? Very loyal to your husband at the end of the day. And you need to be just, you don't need to be very smart because at the end of the day, you need just to take care of the kitchen. This type of normalized doctrination from the parents contributing to this gender-based violence, they created a submissive type of children, especially women, to be afraid of telling how, how having a high dreams or just voicing out their notion is basically very important and valid. And or else for the guy from the authoritarian parenting, they will create the, the this toxic masculinity type of parenting that, oh, men cannot be crying, so you'll be very tough. You need to be very high. You know that you are very valued. That's the reason why they will have this kind of superior complex issue. Then they will think that other than men, they are less superiors. That's why they created this, you know, the phenomenon of thinking that women is less than men. Because we are from the very young age, we are being out that that's what you need to be at the end of the day and i think over emphasis controlling type of parenting contributing this type of uh, result or outcome so i do agree i second every opinion <laughs> that want to emphasizing that indonesia not only lacks of sex education but also parenting education and yeah i think that's really real, you know, relevant and pertinent 
thank you, Ms. Anna, to bring up about how uh, parenting can contribute to the gender-based violence because that what it is right now. And a lot of people try to ignore or deny about the relevance among this type of parenting to the gender-based violence. And that's one of the root that we need to take care of. Back to the moderator. Thank you, Ms. Anna. Okay. Uh, hello. I think my connection is, is unstable right now. Can anybody hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. It's it's uh there's a notification that my connection is unstable. Okay. Um thank you very much, Mr. Demos, for your uh, opinion. That's a very, very great argument I got from you. Previously, before I want to uh, talk, uh are there anybody wants to give in their argument first? Okay, I think uh while we're waiting for another opinion. Oh, okay, Miss Henny, it's your time. Okay, thank you very much, Miss. I would like to give my opinion about um uh, talking about parents who take a uh, uh, take uh, the main important role in the class. Um, you know, um, I was born from military education uh, where my parents uh, teach me how to be disciplined, you know, how to be good mother uh, for their husband, how to uh, what is that to maintain uh, your time, how to be good for your life. Yeah, even even I'm living uh, with my parents, but you know they treat me uh, the military, but uh, they never punished uh, punishment to me. But they teach me how to be disciplined in my life and. I guess that um, if you are living, if you are living in like a, a military education, I guess that it's good for us to be disciplined. Yeah, no matter about uh, whether you are living in this parenting uh, era or uh, where do you want to. What is that? You disagree where um, parents don't like to get angry with their children. Yeah, I guess that it's okay if you wanna. Um, uh, get angry to your children if they don't know how to be good or uh, that's the way uh, you teach your student how to be better I guess because I learned from my parents yeah even my parents is um is strict enough yeah in my life but I learned a lot from them yeah I learned a lot from them uh, wh where they give me the best they support about my study about my life and they al always support me for everything but I love the way they uh, teach me yeah even uh, even you don't like um what is that uh, parenting if you compare with the parenting now where um parents don't have to get angry with their children uh, sorry to say i disagree with this because there are some parts yeah where the, there are some pros and cons we have to uh, we we as a, as a parents they know uh, the best for your uh, children yeah that's all from my side. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Henny, for your insight. It's very good. Uh, Mr. Agung, it's your time. Uh, all right. Uh, you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, first of all, I'm going to say about it first in psychological science. In psychology, there are two things that can influence people, just nature and nurture. Now, first, uh, simplify it. Nature is based on what you're uh born from you know, something you get uh from where you born from and the second one is about nurture simplify is about how people taught you okay in this uh, nurture of side we want that family will we want that family institution will add decent values into members right before someone getting along with the bigger community but since the, this this values is based on personal values which means the head members like parents it can be sometimes kind of different with the consent of the communal or sometimes you can call it universal consent this consent not always delivered by words right if it is sometimes um if people act something it can influence the kids and that's a lot of people doesn't know about it and since um you know in the psychological there's they say that uh since seven, eight or i don't know it's around three until seven years old and someone has their golden 
golden age that someone can learn a lot about that. I mean, yeah, at that moment, that's, most of parents doesn't know about that. They just uh, do a lot of things without they know that it's quite influenced on people, on their kids. And it's quite tricky to me. And yeah, that's what I want to say. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Agu. Uh, Ms. Ekalita, it's your time. Okay. Being a parent is not uh, easy because I'm a parent and I know how hard uh, being a parent is. Imagine that perform the job sometimes we deal with the complicated situation is um um in the related to manufacturers yeah but but um you know also in the in the life is uh no condition is perfect although the perfect parenting is not perfect that we have to be realized because we are connected to many Korean uh, people, right? So we cannot determine their childhood, their parenting, and etc. But we can try to understand and um, having a communication deeper that we have, uh, we can do. But uh, but in reality, it's very hard if you are dealing with people that. They didn't want to understand the limitation and it will be drain your emotion, right? And also feeling because uh, we all in the, we, we are in this parenthesis. No one is the same. Your parent is not the same with me, right? And also contrary and our childhood, our environment, it's not the same. So if you... Um, are bringing up in the good parenting. That's um, that's a fortune for you. But it didn't mean that um, some people that don't have um, any fortune as well, they cannot be a, um, a good human also. It's not like that. But unfortunately for some people, if they, they feel they have a some uh, positive uh, factors, they will be like underestimate people that uh, they thought is negative or not equal with them in the capacity. That's the, the, the problem. But if you realize that you can learn in, for many things, for the people around us, for others' experience, our experience, and many things that you can learn. And if you are dealing with the, uh, someone that you think hard, that you can understand their, um, their um, mind, you can communicate with them. But if you are dealing with people that uh, they didn't want to understand you or contrary, it's really, really, really difficult to having understanding because it's like um, you see a, like a dark or negative um, communication because in your mind that these people cannot be um, have a something positive in them. It's impossible, right? It's impossible for people that have a perfectness and it's possible, it's, it's possible for people, uh, they don't have any positive uh, factors. So if some party feel that they didn't, um, uh, they didn't open the, their mind to the others and try to understand them, although a little child, you cannot understand them because everything is like a baby for you. They are crying for no reason. They are um, like whining for no reason it's for you it's like that because you didn't try to understand the substance um, what is 
uh, something that important in it's not important but like um, um, like connection or lining lining between the communication so that's why if we are trying to understand something you have to understand understand for uh, um, from their side also for so you have to be like have a deeper empathy for them because uh, you have to realize that you are not the same with them that's the problem so when you are have a couple or a worker or anything they will be different with you they're not the same with you so you have to like to communication for yourself and for them also for yourself is your own perception is like inside communication but for them it's like outside communication but the difficult is when you are dealing with the com condition that uh, they uh, and they didn't want to not they but some party didn't want to listen in the real um hurt her her hearing yeah. so they are forcing uh, their mind to you or contrary and that and it will be disaster because like i said everyone is not the same so when you want to connect uh, to having connection or communication to people it's like you have con communication with the children maybe like that in some case because um there is really like a specific condition or um what is there um so i i, I what i want to try to say is understand everything with the context not with your own perception Okay, thank you very much, Mrs. Ekalita. Uh, Sophie Anand, your turn. Sophie, it's your turn. Time is yours. Yes, Miss. Okay, okay. My my hand is freezing. I can't turn on my microphone. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just being really quick because I think it's, it's it's a very long discussion for only one slide. But I think it's really important to also declare that uh, first of all, I would like to say I'm happy for you for that you are raised and grow in a very healthy family. But we can't deny there are a thousand <laughs> of kids that abused by their own parents, even though they are biological kids of them. So we can deny that fact. You can say that as a kid, whatever our parents do to us, they're only human. We should forgive them, blah, blah, blah. I mean, there are 1,600 physical abuse in domestic family, in domestic violence. And also at least in, in currently, if I'm not mistaken, I check there are only in 2020, uh, three, there are 600 sexual harassment that have been done by parents to their biological children. So how cruel that could be. I mean, we can just tell our friends who, who's, who's um, growing from their traumas and they suddenly hate their parents. And we told that, you know what, if you want to go to heaven, if you want to go to, if you wanted to if you want to be a good kid or a good daughter, a good son, whatever, you should forgive them at the end of the day. We can't do that. We can't tell them to forgive them. I mean, these kids have feelings and they're also human. I mean, the narrative that we always hearing since I was a kid, since we were a kid that we should be good and obey and everything, that just so toxic for me. We need to start thinking about from the, the kids' perspective as well, that uh, if the kids had their parents, there must, be, there, must, there must be a strong reason behind it. Not necessarily that they are, um, I don't know what is the English of Durhaka, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are bad kids for their parents. They have a very long period of traumatized um, 
experience that have been provided in their own household, not only for a physical, but also like I saw in the comment section that they mentioned about what their parents arguing, screaming each other. Can you imagine that you experienced this kind of situation for years, for 20 years, for 15 years, and suddenly someone told you to forgive your parents? I think that's just so unfair. I think that that's all I wanna I wanna say. I mean, we can deny the fact that I mean um it's good for you that you have a very healthy environment. I mean if we're passing a cruel world and we can just silent for that, we should be aware for other kids that in the same generation we'll talk about it later. Okay, Mr. Mr. or Miss Suhil, it's uh, your time. Maybe it's the last uh, argument for this question. Okay. okay, thank you very much for the change. I want uh, I interest to give my opinion on you know, this topic. How do you think parents behave to the fact the character of somebody that could make them become gender best valent per perpetrators? Yeah. Okay. Uh I think, as we know that there is uh, some quote from Indonesia, pohon tidak jauh dari, eh, I mean, buah tidak jauh dari pohonnya. The fruit doesn't far, doesn't fall from, from the the tree. I think all the characters, either it from physical, psychology, or emotional, uh, will be our son. But the key to improve or to change uh, our our son personality in order that they will not imitate or they will not uh, continue our bad behavior or thoughts or uh, characteristic is by education. As we know that uh, in Islam we learn about how about uh, prenatal education. If we want to our son be, be smart have more uh, good moral, we can, you, we, or uh, you all, all of you as a mother, you can relax al fatiha so that you know, so that Luqman and many others. So that, one of, that is one of the way to change uh, our son, our son character in order that uh, they will not imitate our, our bad behavior. Maybe me, myself, uh, as uh, a father leader, I aware that I have bad behavior when I was young, when I have uh, married with my with my wife later. So I don't want, I think no one, maybe I couldn't say no one, but majority of parents don't want to their son join bad uh, uh, behavior or characteristic. So the important thing is parenting. For example, like uh, Lala in TikTok, how they speak uh, Indonesian clearly formally i think it's because of uh, her mom her mom is uh, indonesian uh, graduation indonesian education graduation because of his mom because of her mom i think i, I think I, I mean he can speak uh, he can she can speak indonesian formally uh, so that uh, the the key or the solution is education but not only education in indonesia no one is i think uh full there are many people in indonesia is smart but the important thing is as the our first educational figure Haja Dewantoro, uh, build or create moral education it's not only talk about education but moral education how we create our son personality there are many corrupter who are uh, profit who are smart phd and many others but maybe i don't know maybe they don't have moral they have they, they don't have uh about honest so that the important things the important thing is how we create our son from young from child moreover from pre-natural education till they have good moral, I think. Maybe just that for me. Thank you very much. 
Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Tunil. That was really insightful. Okay, for this question, thank you so much for the participants for this question. There are a lot of uh, people joining the an to answer this question. Mr. Dimas, Mr. Yanwar, and Mr. Suhil, Mr. Agung, Ms. Henny, Ms. Ekhanta, and Ms. Sofi. Again, I agree that um, the readiness of a couple to have child is really, really important. Uh, the readiness in here, not only the readiness of their education, but also the psychological or mentality's uh, readiness. And one of the most forgotten uh, importance to uh, be fulfilled by couple is economical readiness, because the fact that uh, the problem in economical uh, uh, sector in uh, domestic context becomes the very, very common, very, very main reason of uh, why the violence in domestic sectors are happening. Like maybe uh, the, uh, the parents, like the couple, they're fighting because they lack like money and then uh, they like, how do you say they, they get separated and yeah, it, it's inevitable. There are so many cases uh, that economic sector has become part of why domestic violence uh, very, uh, it, it plays a big role in uh, in, in domestic sectors. And um, uh, I got the point that uh, the nurturing style of the parents can affect how uh, their children's gonna be. Uh, for example, uh, for uh, Miss Henny's answer about her uh, military child uh, parenting from her parents, as long as you're okay with it, that's okay. Uh, and I got the point that uh, the par our parents can be a role model for us. And uh, if you see, like for example, uh, your dad is a very smart person. Us as a child, I want to be like my dad and something like that. So many children in this world, like they see their parents first as a role model. Uh, if they're being good, then I want you to just be like my parents because they're the closest figures uh, around us. And um, I agree with uh, Sophie's points about uh, that. Uh, be thankful that your parents is... Uh, giving you a good care, good nurtures, but the fact that thousands and even millions of kids out there, uh, they have to face a very unhealthy environment in their family. I mean, it's not only the kids can be rebellious, their parents as well. For example, if like uh, your parents do not fulfill your needs as a child, maybe they don't provide you a good education, or they're, they're not like providing you uh, good food, good nutrition so that you cannot grow healthily. They don't do not provide everything you need. They, they can be rebellious as well. And if you know like the cases, uh, parents who don't want babies and then just like they uh, put the baby away. It, it's, it's a very clear fact that not only child can be rebellious, parents as well. So uh, a healthy family, it's not only by uh, one side's work, but both child and their parents must uh doing a good work as well. Okay, uh, thank you so much. We'll move to the next question, question number four. Okay, what's your opinion about the venomous of victim blaming? You know, like victim blaming is really, really, you know, a very common word that is being used in the context of uh, GBV. Are the perpetrators of gender-based violence always wrong? And the victim always right? Share your opinions. Okay. Anybody wants to uh, give an opinion about this question? Do you want to try to hear people's opinion from somebody who didn't take their chance? Like Finn, you can do that, Fizz. Okay. Uh, wait, I am really confused how if I have to like choosing. Um, maybe like Miss Isna Naziha. Okay, maybe Miss Isna. Do you want to speak up about this about the victim blaming phenomenon? I'm not sure if she's there or she's there, but I don't know. Maybe he, she don't don't know what to talk. Or Ahdan Gifari. 
Okay, before I will making some group that um the example of victim blaming in the context of um uh, GBV, the gender-based violence, is like questioning the victim's behavior, like their clothes or uh, the time of the incident. For example, uh, a man harassing a woman because they wear a short pants or like just t-shirt or something like that, and they, they will blame them because it's uh, the, 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 this incident happened. I harassed you because you're wearing such clothes like that. So it's not my fault. That, that, that's how victim blaming can be. And or maybe like uh, a girl walking alone at night and they uh, uh, receive some harassment. And then the perpetrators will say, don't blame me if I'm harassing you because you're going out alone at night. It's your fault. You're a girl, you should, should be at home. So, uh, it's it's a very common like we're uh, blaming the victim be, uh, with the harassment they receive and um even like uh yeah yeah I think that's that's the argument for me anybody who wants to comment about it about the victim blaming okay Miss Sophie again time is short please tell me if I'm speaking too much I'm gonna stop it's okay <laughs> it's okay I'm happy I'm happy with uh your insights. Actually, I saw there's no one raising their hand and I said, this is a very interesting question. Like, so why not, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. yeah um, I've, I've witnessed that, that I also experienced it in my, in my uh, personal, personal life that uh, people always blaming us to, to wearing some certain of um, clothes or whatever. And because because of that, they they justify their behavior. They justify their abusive abusive um actions by that, which so not logical by me. And um, I, on the other hand, I also understand that we're living in Indonesia that we have a very um the most uh, Muslim population in the world, not only in Asian. So I completely understand that we should well behave. Sometimes we should um what's adjust our clothes in particular area, in particular situation, I totally get that. But um, the fact that uh, uh, there is a, there is a experience that I, I talk, I, I hang out with my group of friends and then uh, we talk about this kind of um, case that, oh, you know what, like a week ago, there is a girl who being raped and uh, it's actually our our friend from our campus like uh, instead of talking about her condition instead of talking about like uh, how his how she's doing now um, he, she's she's mentality and everything this guy that that um, my friends one of my friends guy um, answer and reacted like yeah and she's now being so uh um what is I don't know what is the English please um she's become a very aggressive woman because of that you know what the narrative that uh if you already touch by stranger you become a naughty girl you know you you label as a naughty girl because you're not pure anymore it, even though it, that's not she's that's not her decision to experience that disaster that's a nightmare for her we should we we, we should be very sorry and help her actually but um my my guy's friend only one of the example of most of the guys out there who react the same way that they're uh she's not long she's no longer pure because she already raped i mean excuse me this is so crazy i can't believe this this is coming from my close environment and this is a very common um reaction by by uh by by us especially in our society in indonesia and which very very sad i found it i think that's it miss Okay, there's a very interesting uh, insights from you. Uh, I agree that uh, people who blame uh, the victims, not only women, but also men for their uh, clothes they wear, and then like, it's okay to harass them because of their clothes. That's a really, really, really a disaster. Um, you know what, I one day I found on Twitter, there is a community in Twitter, and it's it's crazy, it's really crazy, guys, you know. <laughs> Uh, there's a community in Twitter uh, that have a fetish of a niqabi women. You know niqabi women? A girl who like wearing full covered 
uh, floats, like they only show their eyes. They have a, a community who has a fetish on them. That's crazy. And they will say it in that uh, community that girls who wear revealing clothes is not appealing at all because we already know their body, so it's not appealing. And those people with this fetish, they thought that uh, the more closed their body, it's make them more mysterious. So it makes me more uh, appealed with imagining their body inside the niqab. That's crazy. That's really crazy. I mean, uh, until in what point we have to cover ourselves, even if we already like covering our full body, they still they still like thinking dirty things about the, about us and want to harass us and yeah that's crazy i mean like you should not uh uh make uh, their appearance or the time of the incident as an excuse that it's okay to like harass them and something like that and um i agree with, with the point that uh sometimes uh let's take an example that uh a girl uh, maybe she was already like being raped in the past or maybe she's not a virgin at all so people will think that it's okay like to touch them or harass you because you're not holy anymore or uh, you're already worthless you, you're not a virgin anymore you've ever been raped or you haven't you ever having sex with your ex or something so it's okay to harass you you're not holy that's that's i think that's kind of sick way of thinking because it's not they uh you know it's not their uh again they're, they're they're a victim they nobody in this world no no matter whether they're a virgin or not uh they they're not deserving a very disgusting act like like uh sexual harassment or sexual assault or whatever it is or some disgusting words that saying that um it's because you're not holy anymore so it's okay if you're being harassed uh, that, that was crazy i think yeah that's that's my opinion about this uh you know the point about the victim blaming and uh ironically the case of victim blaming is still really common in our place like if, if you see so many rape cases that is being uh uploaded in maybe in social media in instagram something most of them are people they, they're still like blaming the girl or the victim of the uh sexual assault and that's really sad fact for me okay wait um Anybody wants to uh give more argument about it? Uh, Miss Rodimus in the comment. What really pissed me off when they animalize their criminal mindsets as animal acts? Yeah, I mean, like we're not animal, you know. Like sometimes, I actually, how can I say it? Those people who are doing victim blaming to the victim they like making an analogy that us girls are candies so if we're covered then there will be no ants will eat us but if we're open don't blame the ants to come for you i think that's a sick analogy because first of all we're not candy and number two even if we're covered there were still so many people outside there sick people having fetish over us and that's a fact that i found on uh, our society okay mr or miss ota your argument all right am i audible everyone okay thanks thanks for the chance given by uh by giving me the time to speak up because the host called me to speak up. <laughs> okay, what's your opinion about the phenomenon of victim blaming? Are the perpetrators of gender based violence always wrong and the victim always right? Well, what I want to highlight with the moderator said is that woman it seems like candy. Actually what it covers is our logical and also our our our, our logical ethical, aesthetical and philosophical. Why? Let me give an example that two weeks, uh, two months ago, I met uh, someone who has a someone who has a business in prostitutions, and he is the leader in the province. Uh, I don't. I of course I will not mention about the name, but what what you talk about it that true. If the woman, what I asked to him is when the woman covers his body, especially for one belief, that it will be 
much interesting rather than the woman who already opens their body to, ser to be served and so forth. And luckily, notice it's coming to educational institutions because of fac uh, economical factors. Uh, why I ask, why, why I can believe her like this one? Because you know that the actor actually, if you have this characteristic, uh, what I alter, what I wanted uh, as a, how to, to, to fulfill this business, I would get the fee and so forth. It comes up in my logical reasoning and my logical awareness. What makes it different Anima, both animal and human if we have reasoning. That's why I underlined about logical. If our logical is aware, whatever the, your attributes, whatever the attributes are, whether it is Muslim, Christians, Hinduism, Buddhism, and so forth, as long as our logical awareness is aware, is alive, we don't do that. Why we could go to philosophical reasoning uh, philosophical reasons because we live and we love not only about personal maybe it's personal i do rape i do sexual harassment and so forth it doesn't matter for me personally but why we don't raise up to the neck or to the collective wisdom to the collective environment because we couldn't live alone in this world so we as the uh, sorry uh in terms of living in this world, personally, think about a collective life, collective environment in this world. And an aesthetical, go to the aesthetical case is, you know that life, live life is boring, believe or not. That's why some somebody needs something new to upgrade it, their life in order to see a uh, interesting point from their, their perspective. Whatever you're watching, let's say you are watching K-pop, maybe some of them watching because of it's entertaining and so on, without blaming each other. If you dislike it, see what they can uh, be influenced by K-pop and Korean. Maybe it's because of cultural language and so forth. And then, now for religious case, it depends on the belief. What uh, some people already talked about, uh, it's because of the dogma and doctrine and so on. Yeah, because religions give limitations. Then we will not forbid what the religious already, uh, already, how to say, regulated or obey it as a collective belief. That's why, to sum up my, my opinion is, logical reasoning, whatever the, the, the attributes are. Thank you very much, without blaming each other, without blaming uh, other beliefs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ota. I think that's a very great uh, argument that you gave that. Uh, it's about the logical reasoning, all right? And um, I read in the comment uh, that about the virgin test in Indonesia, uh, yeah, I also confused why they still do it in Indonesia. I mean, one time my lecturer in my campus uh, once talked about this, that uh, the, the, the virginity test is actually reducing the reducing the value of a woman. They only uh, put value on women only by their virginity. I mean, we girls, we have so many, you know, potential and it's not only by our genitalia why not you like uh, value us from our uh smart brain or something or our richness it's it's actually it's my lecture saying that um the the virginity test is actually like reducing the value of women virgin is also okay so virginity is also a social contract yes okay i think that's enough for this uh slide we will move on to another interesting question question number five all right 
How do you think gender-based violence could impact somebody's psychology or mentality? So what do you think will happen to people who uh, experience gender-based violence, however it is? I mean, it could be sexual assault or it could be um, like forced marriage or economical discrimination based on the gender or something like that. Anybody wants to give an opinion? What will happen to them mentally? All right, Mrs. Ekalita, your turn. Yeah, of course, it will be, it will be um, very influenced them to behave with their open side. Because I thought it's gender-based violence. It's like um, something cruel in the attitude that it it also um about the rape and the apa? cruel cruel uh, parent to the babies they rape the babies it, I think it's very very I didn't imagine uh the topic is so um outrage of the the, the problems like that. I think it's like um, insulting or sexual harassment. So I think um, gender-based violence could impact some body, 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 uh, psychology mentality. It's from the doers or the victim or both. It could be both, but maybe like because uh, it's the victim will will uh experience more of it. So what's your opinion about that? Oh yeah, of course, of course for the victims they will be like trauma, right? And they will be uh think that f uh, every opposite will be seen with them, right? For the doers, of course, um, it's like like addicted so, so they thought that their um their um behave is get acceptable because i don't know what happening with that maybe it can be parenting but it can be not of, uh, about that also maybe the parent is good but they can adopt the the about the deed from the environment because uh, they have friends right and maybe they're watching something or they they read something that inspired them and they can uh, and change them to the behavior but um the best thing is um when people have gender based violence it's because like i said they underestimate their opposite and they think that uh, they are weak and they are like a nasty or something that um, um can and um bisa bisa diperlakukan bisa diperlakukan buruk apa gitu can 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 um can they can receive bad oh, okay. yeah can receive bad bad uh, behavior because they are not virgin or they they're close or something else. And sometimes when people um, teaching um, others and they said uh, something like this, that if you see um, the people that have um, um, like a negative images, then you can do uh, something to her. And I think it, it can influence the guys also, right? Because in their minds that there is a, the women is divided because from, from their clothes or their behavior, but the real is not like that. Because if you have a good a religion, you will know that in the Al Quran uh, say that if you see some women that they didn't um, uh, proper in the uh, appearance, the uh, the Quran didn't uh, told you to um, insulting them, not like that, but you have to um, lower your sight, right? Don't look at them and you have to um, turn on, turn off your face. 
something like that if you have a good religion but it's like um it's like um um apa uh, ambiguous when when the people have a good religion but they say uh you have a double hundred for some women because of their appearance okay thank you mrs Aikalita. i got a very good point from you okay mommy malona or oh, okay <laughs> okay thank you miss uh according of the question i want to share my uh, experience about this you know i i have a friend that friends by his stepfather and it be make who in my opinion he uh chance to be a aggressive woman he still like to having sex with many guys and uh after that i think that maybe this is because of mentality yeah. after get harassment by a start others and he, he get a mentality but i do believe for the other people with the same uh same uh what to say same uh, problem i mean harassment by the others they might be uh uh the opposite of the aggressive i mean maybe they will feel so frightful for men or something like that so talk about mentality it will be different for uh every person yeah. and uh, and the other class i ever uh read that um man when he in the past ever get harassment by by men and it can uh, be it can make uh, the victim the 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 man victim can uh, do the same in the in the uh, future so i think this is because of mentality so according of the equation i just want to share my experience about that uh, from what i know that's all me thank you yes yeah, thank you very much mommy malona that was wow it's wow to me okay uh miss indri okay yeah it is absolutely impactful to the victim and it is absolutely traumatizing and what's more they're not get support by society and it returns to victim blaming like they command they criticize the victim and they said it happened because they do the um, immoral things like you guys mentioned uh, how how they dress how they act and other and there is a phenomenon where a child is blamed after she is being raped and so and society said why didn't you run away why didn't you reject it that means you want to have sex with him. And actually, I just want to share a book that I read. It's about a, a sexual abuse psychology because I work in uh, sexual abuse and uh, sexual exploitation cases uh, because, I, yeah. And um, uh, from the book that I, I read, a child who who is being raped, they felt like their soul was not there. They imagine that they are above the clouds and looking at the scene. So they felt like that that weren't them. So the point is we cannot blame a victim at all. So yeah, that's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Ms. Indri. I got a view, guys. First of all, from Mrs. Ekalita, that uh, the the points from the religious side that yeah. it's always, the people always uh, highlighting the words that us girls have to cover our chests or just cover your body so that nobody gonna harass you. But we forgot the point that uh, the men have to uh, lower your sight, and uh, I think I think that's a very important point because. Um, people forget about it. People forget about it. They, they only highlight the one that uh, only talk about how women must act, but they forget uh, to tell what the men have to do uh, as well. And uh, um, they also forget that the word uh, that men have to lower their, their sight is being mentioned earlier rather than 
the uh, points that us women have to cover ourselves. And yeah, I think it's it's just like, you know, both of those points are important, but people are forget about the other one that um the other side, the other people have to lower their side as well. And um from Mami Malona, um yeah, uh the 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 past experience of the victim of the sexual harassment or sexual assault, it can you know affect differently every on every people some are traumatized and they they become uh, scared of uh doing uh new relationship or building relationship they're scared of that or it makes them uh feel like depressed or having a low self esteem or maybe like they feel guilty of themselves because they cannot uh take care of their body or something but on the other uh, her friends that uh yeah. the the victim because like she have ever been harassed by his uh stepfather in the past if i'm not mistaken uh then it make her become even more aggressive in sexual ways because maybe in my opinion it's because uh the the, the fact that maybe she thought that he, she is not you know feeling unvaluable because she is already being harassed by her dad and then it makes her oh, it's okay to just do it to every man i want or something like that that was really sad i feel sorry for your friends i wish uh she was in a good health and something and um from miss indri uh uh yeah i agree that um the the victim is mm, in our society commonly they are not being supported by our society they are they already uh, receiving uh the harassment and then on the other side they are being assaulted uh sexually and on the other side the people is um trying to make distance with them they they separate this victim from the society and the, the the victim still have to you know like facing a bad words from uh, the people and still have to receiving like bad stigma from the people and they trying so hard to overcome those things after uh the harassment it, it makes them like you know receiving a great and hard uh life challenges that is being destined for them and sometimes it can lead them to like doing a suicidal act or having some suicidal thoughts and maybe they will uh doing like self-harm act like cutting their head and something that, that was really sad as well okay anybody wants to talk again uh miss indri you're still raising your hand or you like still have to oh okay okay uh wait let me oh, okay miss henny time shows okay thank you miss i uh, i would like to add a bit uh opinion about this uh talking about gender the gender-based violence yeah if we talk about gender-based violence it's time to women or girl uh sometimes had this condition you know um why it's happened because there are many uh many what is influence from their family uh, because they came from low family level and sometimes they cannot run away from the situation yeah if they um yeah of course it has um uh, impact so much for for them especially like in indonesia we have so many domestic violence that we have all the moon start from teenagers uh housewife especially housewife where they trap in a toxic relationship or toxic married life but they cannot run away from that situation as we know that uh they were coming from a uh, low level yeah so it's hard for them to run away from that situation once they decide to run away or to get divorced with their husband. They have to consider about their children. They have to consider about their life later on. Yeah, that's the main factor. Yeah, that sometimes in fact to their life. Of course, for physical 
physically and mentally it's uh, really like a big wave for them yeah uh, not only mentally but also physically they will get stress yeah even they will get insane because of their condition but you know sometimes the environment from their family from their husband they don't support anymore so uh, if we find this problem so if we know this problem better we have to support them yeah, we have to report to the police if you find yeah one of this problem you can help them yeah you can help them you can be a good friend to them yeah? help them because as you know that in Indonesia once they uh, want to report to the sorry to say uh, to the policeman especially for the housewife the police also get an interview yeah it's okay this is your husband you have to understand yeah? you have to uh, what is that to be uh, appreciate your to appreciate your husband you have to follow your husband that it's not the real answer it's not the answer for their report yeah uh, as a as a uh, sorry to say as a policeman they help to help them until we have already known until they died they will have uh, they they just respond they report that's all from this side thank you okay thank you so much miss Henny. so um I agree that uh, ironically, so many housewives in Indonesia, like they actually, it's not only in Indonesia as well, but like mostly in Indonesia, where our conservative people are still there, um, the housewives who are uh, being trapped in such a very uh, toxic relationship, they they cannot escape from that uh, from that life. First of all, maybe like they have no economical. In Dependence because maybe their husband like forbid them to work because it's better for you to stay at home. You should not work and something like that. You have to take care of the house and something like that. So they have they they become dependent on their husband, uh, incomes and something like that. And uh yeah and um when the you know the husband being uh being toxic to the wives, uh. In some point, the wife cannot ex escape because of other reasons. Maybe like they have a child, and uh, they're still thinking about how my children is gonna be if I divorced. I, I, you know, I feel bad for my child if uh it has no father figure or something. Even if the father is toxic, and maybe it's gonna be bad for the you know the grow of the child, but. Sometimes they still think that it's still better for the wife to uh, stay to the, their husband because of the children uh, reasoning and something. Okay, uh, I think we're gonna move to the question six. How do you think we can create a safe space for people from the risk of gender-based violence, both for men or women? Hmm. You know, uh, I think it's uh, the question of how do you think we can make a solution so that uh, we can make a safer space for uh, the people, moreover, for those people who are uh, having a bigger risk for getting uh, harassment uh, in the context of gender-based violence. Okay, Ms. Mercedes Ekaliba, it's your time. I think it's a little bit hard because it's uh, related to the culture. Like, I think that in the culture that they have, uh, like the standard um, attitude, it's very hard for them to treat the men poor. So they have um, not, not been judging them from what their uh, appearance is, yeah, something like that. So um, although we have a like major religion in Indonesia, but if the culture is didn't support it, it's very hard because the culture is um, how we behave daily, how we um, um, per, uh, perception something, um, not perception, how we um, see something and adopt something to be, uh, uh, to be our behavior. Like if you are in the your daily, if you always uh, kind with people and respect people, and it will be more easier for you to um, have a good bit. 
like I said, maybe you didn't know uh, the Quran, right? That if you, in your daily routine, you always do the good things, it will be more um, easier for you than if you know the Quran. But in your daily routine, you didn't um, um, ha have that habit. Like I said, in the daily routine, you always uh, have to standard. You always underestimate people. Although the Quran says uh, you can do things like that, it's very difficult because in your daily routine, you you ju uh, you just know uh, things that that you recognize uh, um, very uh, familiar with you. That's why um, the culture is um, the very important um, uh, part like in the bullying or uh, like a sexual harassment, if you are in the environment that can tolerate that, of course, it's really, really hard for you to defend yourself, right? Because the culture will see that it is a part of the process of your life. It's something that um, the option that the people can take because it's like um, when you are um, choosing tea and coffee and something like that, or beer, something like that, and it's the option in the menu. So, so it's very good if you didn't offering it in the uh, menu. You cannot choose that, right? So, um, so I think um, the education of the characters is more important than than the education for um what is that um cognitive something like that yeah uh, so i think um maybe we can um refer to the finland um um not curriculum but finland education maybe something like that so they are appreciate attitude than the intelligence something like that because if you just care about the intelligence, it means that you didn't build the human character, but you built uh, animal characters. Because we can see that how animal can have smart in their um, their survival, right? That they don't have any attitude when they are dealing with many things. They cannot choose. Uh, they cannot. They cannot. Um, they cannot familiar with the distant thing. Yeah, you cannot you cannot tell the cat not to touch your mother, something like that, right? Or your sister, or other cats that um as as as, as you wish. How how can you uh tell that? But if you if your education is like that, then you cannot see people respect others. Because um, you only care about their knowledge and how smart they are, but you didn't care how they treat people or um, have a good behavior. Like respect, respect people is more important than the uh, than the something that uh, maybe you can debate. Yeah, something like that. Because um, uh, like I said. Um, the children need um, like role model, right? From their parenting, their environment, their religion as well. And um, they they need um, something positive to consume. But if they didn't have any luck to have that, then maybe we have to more understanding when they have the limitation and they want to change. But if they didn't want to change, of course we have to put them as a criminals, right? Because mostly if they are violent others and didn't care, and maybe they are a victim as the first, but and then they will be the doers and they didn't want to change their behavior, they, they will be a psychopath, right? So uh, to treat sacrifice also you, 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 you um, it's, it's, it's something that, um, something that, um not 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 it's 
is a different context for what I said. What I said is like uh, some people that they have no clue and then they are bringing up with the negative values, but when they found out it's a false and they want to change um, their behavior, yeah, you can give them the chance. But if they didn't want the chance and they are being a bad influence to the society, of course, you have to um, be uh, take a boundary for them. Okay, that's all, Mrs. Ekalita. Thank you so much. Yes. Okay, the last one for today, uh, Ms. Sophie, it's your turn. All right, thank you, Miss. First of all, I would like to appreciate you as our moderator because I found your slides is very uh, fascinating. You're not only arrange the slides um, for cases and problem, at the end, you also provide a question of how we solve all of this, which I think really important because we can't just complain about everything and running without thinking about the solution. I think we should also stay till the end and thinking about um, how to cope with or dealing with this kind of situation. And uh, to me, I think um, uh, I, 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 I witnessed a couple of differences with uh, what I found it during my childhood environment and my currently environment, which now I live in a, one of European country and I found a lot of differences. And I know sometimes when I talk about the differences between this both country, people uh, reacted to, yeah, yeah, you, you're, you're there and we're here. Like you can compare Indonesia and, and Germany and I'm just gonna sh be silent about it because there's nothing I can do. But if you're asking me this kind of question and the, uh, the, the experience that I experienced, I've been here for like six months and I never experienced a single cat calling in Germany there, uh, or any other uh, sexual uh, harassment. I hope not in the future as well. I really hope so. But I'm pretty safe to walking at night or just strolling around the city by my own self, which I found I kind of questioning why there's a lot of there's a there's differences between my country and this country. And I found it. I also ex uh, witnessing all the guys on my class that they're they're very um, they're also asking for our opinion before they're they're actually deciding something. They're they're always asking about our consent, whether our whether we comfortable enough of doing this or not. Which I found it. It's actually best on the root is best on their family. They're, that's how their parents treat them. That's how their parents raise them that they should always asking the other person that they're talking with of their consent of their agreement before they actually doing it so um i know that this is a big problem and it takes a long time to fix this because we already grew in some of us in a toxic fam family and whatsoever but i think when we would like to come up with a, a short time solution we should uh, strong and we should be strict and strong in terms of our laws because um here in germany um they if if you if you can make people uncomfortable and people call a police related to that you could you could go to jail for two years without compromise no matter you are you're a you're a son of governor you're a you're you're a very rich guy no matter what your background is uh there's no compromise. You'll go to jail for two years because you're making us uncomfortable. Whether it's not only about sexual harassment or whatsoever, it's simply if you're having a party in the middle of the night in the weekdays and you make your neighbor um, uh, uncomfortable about this kind of situation. So I think we could also apply this in Indonesia that we're uh, if we're really strict and strong about uh, our laws that if you did this. If, if there is a, a strong punishment on the other one, that's, I, I guess my point was, um, the, the perpetuators or the bad guys also rethink about the the act that would like to apply in the future. They, they also, because we have a very weak 
week low that the thing oh i could just um give some certain of some some amount of money of the police and i will i'll be a free man again that's how it is and but if we apply on the opposite rules no matter what you will go to jail you will punish with this certain of um a punishment they will i think that that also make them rethink about their of their action in the future i think that's all i can think about uh no. okay okay yep yep <laughs> Sorry, I'm okay okay thank you very much Savi. that was a very nice point okay the very last one uh miss henny i think you have to uh make it a little bit shorter because of the limitation of the time okay uh time is yours miss henny thank you very much for giving me time to give my perspective about this uh, according to me, yeah, to create a safe environment or uh, to save a space for people, not only for men, but also for women, of course, we need to do the action first. We have to um, hug them. We have to help them. We need, uh, we have to respect. We have to help, yeah, whatever about the situation they, they have already done. But, you know, uh, as I know that there is a one of the website, if you find uh, some uh, criminal case like uh, sexual harassment, you can open this website. Uh, the name of website is metoomovement.com. Yeah, uh, I guess that in Indonesia, we have we also have this. So you can report, uh, you can report everything to this website. Don't be shy if you find, um, what is that, the case of this. Uh, maybe you can, uh, like uh, domestic violence or rape or everything, you can speak out, yeah. And just keep silent into your heart, but you have to help them, support them, don't bully them. Yeah, help them. That's all from my side. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Miss Henny. Oh, so basically, uh, from the uh arguments, we can like sum up that uh the respect to other women is no respect to other people are very very important to, and um the culture of that place it can affect on the situation as well so um from the uh miss sophie story that in germany it's very safe to strolling around because uh the government is very you know put a lot of intervention on this case in this context to uh cope the problem of uh, gender-based violence in there. So uh, the point is, the, the the role of government is very important as well. So government must uh, the, the the solution that I can catch from your opinion is that um the government must make clear policies for this one. Maybe like uh be more clear and strong enough with their policy about it and something like that. And uh. The point about, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, raising awareness, I guess. I mean, like we have to uh, raising awareness uh, to other people by the sex education, like Mami Malona, uh, Miss Mami Malona said in the uh, comment. Uh, she said that, what about sex education? I think it's kind of important to think and also what's our reaction if we get sexual harassment because mostly the victim afraid to speak up. That's the point that we have to raise awareness and promoting uh, the uh, the empowerment of it, like uh, promoting and telling people how can they seek help when somebody's like harassing them, how to find some help, how to uh, reporting the case they, uh, they receive from the perpetrator. And that's in, in this point, th there is the uh, role of the government as well. Well, they have to uh, provide a, a good uh, policy so that those victims can uh receive a good uh you know mm, mm, healings from the uh governments uh using for our uh, questions today it's a very great discussion i'm having fun actually tonight and because of the limitation of time uh we have to stop up here for more discussions and basically I think all of us are agree that we, uh, gender based violence is never going to be right and we have to respect other people and gender based violence is actually a very complex thing that uh, happened in human society so uh, even it make uh, some university in this world like 
making a specific study about gender studies, something like that. Okay, I think that's all for tonight. Thank you so much for uh, the chance for being a moderator tonight. And um, time, I, I will give my time back to uh, Mr. Host, Mr. Iqbal. Oh, finally, <laughs> it's such as an honor. Uh, amazing, spectacular, and interesting topic that I've been brought here. And a lot of people like try to give their opinion. And yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, it, it seems like not to really satisfied because we just have only like two hours to talk about this. Maybe there must be like part two <laughs> for the next topic. So thank you very much for Ms. Alphys, everyone who have been providing their time to join this uh, discussion for tonight. And yeah, for the feedback, I will send it to our group later. And guys, like usual, before we close this um, discussion for tonight, uh, let's take a picture together. So if you don't mind, please open your camera and we're going to take it. Thank you, Mr. Damit. Welcome back. As our whole Ms. P from Germany. <laughs> All right. So I guess there is no one wants to open their camera anymore. So three, two, one, guys, and cheers. Okay, cool. One more with a second. Um <laughs> try to save this picture first. Okay, wait, oh my goodness, wait a second, oh, can you help me to, to take the second picture, sir, uh, it's okay, oh, yeah. it's okay. I, I can help with that, okay, 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 yeah. uh, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. All right. <laughs> so three already. All right. So thank you so much for anyone who has come. And we will meet again in another spectacular discussion in weekly author discussion with me and other uh, moderators. Thank you so much. And as I say, we'll be later today. So I'm going to go to the and have a nice day tomorrow. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Ciao. Yeah. I will leave now, right? Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.